as historian of, uh, of knowledge and the university, looking uh, at the current status of knowledge or research at, in Europe and the universities in Europe, and comparing them to the glorious days of the 19th centuries, what's, what's, what do, does Germany or France or Europe do, should do in order to, to be the leaders in, in academic uh, research? Yeah, <laughs> that is really a big question. I mean, I have been writing a kind of global overview of the history of the universities. And in my, in my way of, of understanding it, we have a long period of, of um, university history starting in the Middle Ages, going to the late 18th century, which I call the Latin University. After that, we have the German period, German epoch, going from, from the mid, late 18th century to the, well, the Second World War, basically. And then we have the American period, which starts in the 1930s, 1940s, and perhaps continue to this day. But what we perhaps see today is a new kind of university emerging uh, in not so democratic countries, in China, for example, or in other parts of the Middle East, where we have a huge, massive investments in the natural sciences, in technology, in medicine, but perhaps not so much in the humanities and social sciences, especially the critical social sciences. But these universities in Singapore or in other parts of, 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 of China or other parts of the Middle East, um, they can be really successful in terms of uh, scientific output, uh, but they are not promoting a democratic society, of course. So that is a challenge for both European universities, American universities and universities in other parts of the democratic world, that how to combine um, the advancements of, of science and scholarship with a kind of democratic foundation. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Uh, I, I let you, uh, just um, where does this question comes from? Um, is as, as Israeli, I'm looking at the past and the success of Jewish uh, science or scientists from Jewish uh, origins uh, in Germany uh, and then in the United States uh, later on. And I asking myself, how can we recreate such a success, uh, academic success in, uh, in Israel? Um, so here, here we are. This is the, the major question, a major yeah. question for us, but also for any any uh, society, I think. Uh, but you are part of uh, European Research Council, aren't you? you uh, yeah. Israeli scholars and researchers can apply. Yeah. yeah. And that, I think, is one of the great in inventions uh, in the last two decades. It has been very important for, for European research, uh, this basic uh, curiosity-driven research. You mean the uh, ERC? The ERC. ERC, ERCR, exactly. Uh, it's very prestigious and very good and well-founded. Uh, so I think that is a very good way. And hopefully that will help to, uh, well, promote really good basic research also in the years to come. I see, I see. Yeah. So it, when you look around the ERC uh, grants that you see are a success, um, yeah. meaning in the product that the people who are getting them and the product they, they produce, even in the humanities, yeah. you know, because I have a friend, the historian, and she says, you know, I, I need time for myself. I don't want to run huge uh, uh, research groups and mm. so on. So uh, maybe the ERC is not good for the humanities, for example. Uh, so or, that's she, this is what she thinks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would argue that the way around that just because we have this very strong tradition of individualistic scholarship in the humanities, uh, me and my book, I write my big book. I think we need definitely also funding schemes and funding opportunities for those who want to create a research group, an environment, a center, uh, working together with people. I think we need both in the humanities, but definitely not only this 
me and my book tradition. We also need to create collaborative work. Uh, greatness uh, comes from uh, great tutorship, uh, from great training. And what the American is, uh, have, um, among other things, uh, they have money and elite uh, education, also migrants, uh, many migrants, are, uh, immigrants are coming there uh, yep. uh, with skills. They have the graduate school. And the graduate school is a training program that uh, is missing uh, in much of Europe. What I mean is a cohort of students coming into um, uh, a program after the undergraduate level and going uh, all the way with the PhD. Um, there, is, there is a lot of things to improve in the mentor-mentee relations, but the graduate program is something that Europe is missing, mostly missing at the moment. You think it's um, it, it's it's important aspect uh, yeah. of, of the training? Uh, do you yep. see changing? Well, definitely. I'm, I mean, I, I fully agree. That was one of the big important inventions of the Americans uh, at the turn of the last century to add that uh, element. And we have seen that in, in Scandinavia and in, in Germany, I know, grew uh, the growth of, of graduate schools in the last two decades, perhaps, I would say, when, when you're able to hire perhaps 10 PhD students at the same time, offer them mentorship, offer them courses, offer them jointly organized workshops. As they still, of course, have to write their individual dissertations. Uh, but I think that is a very good model. We have that at my department, uh, a kind of graduate school devoted to historical scholarships. And that has been very important. So I, I fully agree. More of that, please. One, one issue is, uh which is very very prominent in the Israeli discourse, is the future of uh, the humani humanities. Mm. And we see a decline in the number of students yeah. because uh, budgeting is, con is, is correlated with, uh, with the number of students. Students are going to more practical uh, degrees. Um, and I guess the, the issue is uh, all over. It's not only in Israel, but do, is it right? And do you see any kind of um, important innovation in university uh, government or governance that can uh, be ideas that can be imported to, to here, for example? Well, I think you are partly right, as far as I can understand, uh, when it comes to many countries. Uh, in Well, it's hard to generalize, but definitely in Britain. It's, it's really a hard time uh, for many humanities faculties, not, not in Cambridge or Oxford, perhaps, but in, in many of the smaller universities or mid-sized universities. The same, I think, goes for many parts of, of the United States. Uh, the problem is not in Princeton or Yale or, or Harvard or Stanford, but in, in other kind of universities. Uh, there you can see kind of merging of, of uh, humanities departments or the closing of, of, of old disciplines. I don't think the situation is so bad in Germany. I think the funding is relatively strong, partly also doing, which has to do with this conservative system. You, you don't change it very easily. Um, and also the status in society, a kind of old intellectual culture, middle class, uh, which still somehow exists. In fact, in Sweden, the situation is not that bad, I would say, at the moment. We have relatively good funding, not as good as natural sciences or social sciences or medicine, but still, I mean, it's it's not shrinking. Uh, um, it isn't. And you find at least uh, a couple of really vital humanities environments. When it comes to, I mean, this kind of inventions, I think it's hard to have really small subjects, really small disciplines. You have to find larger frameworks, interdisciplinary environments, initiatives like medical humanities, digital, digital humanities, uh, environmental humanities is one way of doing that. What I've been trying to promote history of knowledge is a way of 
combining many historical, small historical uh, disciplines, history of the books, uh, history of education, history of science, history of ideas, and to have a larger umbrella, which we call history of knowledge. That is one way of, of try to counteract this, not to stick to very small uh, environments, small, uh, try to, to, to find some kind of common denominator, which is larger. Yeah. And, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, it was an uh, insightful uh, talk and uh, I learned a lot and I'm very grateful. And I would love to have you again uh, with us uh, maybe next year, if you will be willing, uh, we'll keep in touch on that. Yes, please. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so Thank much. You very much.